Welcome back. When it comes to raising kids, a certain degree of mental and physical exhaustion is expected, right? I think we all can agree on that. But new research shows the number of parents who are experiencing more than normal stress is on the rise. It's called parental burnout and it can have lasting effects. Here to weigh in is, of course, our Kara Kinnear, media personality and producer Summer Jackson, and making his Real Talk debut, psychiatrist and author Sukrat Bhargave, aka Dr. B. Yay. Yay. We're so happy. And by the way, you agreed with me and not Chesley in the Love Doctor segment. Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. He was off. Yeah, he was off. I Sorry. Like Real my man. Right. Yeah, he was yeah. off. Drop Sorry. His love, his love radar was not. Yes, just had to throw that in, Chesley, yeah. if you're watching. Okay, <laughs> so let's dive in. Um, I, I love that they've given this a term. It's like a no joke, burnout. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, the experts from psychology today define parental burnout as an overwhelming exhaustion, as we mentioned, mm -hmm. related to one's parental role, an emotional distancing from one's children, a sense of parental ineffectiveness. So do you guys, is this anything new? Hasn't this always been a struggle? I'm sure our parents went right. through it, but do you think we're just talking about it now? Dr. B, I'll start with you. You know, I, I think parenting has always been demanding and stressful and at times thankless. Uh, I think the difference <laughs> now really is that maybe the demands are more scheduled. Mm -hmm. So instead of a kid coming home and being able to go play outside, now, you know, we got to take them to their, each one of them to their activities. You were talking about tutoring for the yes. SSAT. So yes. uh, we leave our jobs and we come home and then you got to check email. I just think that the, the downtime isn't there anymore. And mm -hmm. now that we've got more expectation, more scheduled, demands, yes. we're burning out more. We are. Mm -hmm. Summer, yeah. uh, you have <laughs> notes in front of you like this. Oh, no. Clearly this article <laughs> resonated with you. It did, it did. Just because, you know what, we want to be the best parents that we can. Yeah. And so sometimes even in trying to be, you know, the best parent that you can, you overdo it. You know, so one of the things though, and I know we'll get to that part, but one of the things I, I built in from day one with my two girls was that, look, I have to minimally get a manicure <laughs> and a pedicure like that helps me feel like me yeah so I schedule that into my life to help me feel better that, that's your mommy yeah, it's moment. so small it's right. my mommy moment sure. I take those moments right you know but again sometimes we can't but yeah it, it's definitely something that I think we all experience from time to time this article was dead on. dead right. on yeah. Yeah. well I, I too I think it's a spectrum right and it's relative so like things our generation our kids are dealing with are obviously different than previous generations and how our parents dealt with certain mm -hmm. things and I think too that the comparison culture of well, these people are doing all this do I need to do this to make sure my kid mm -hmm. right. is up to par which yes. really right. Right. is that that important because their needs are very minimal right. Right. social yes. media yes. Then yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. guys yeah. don't you they also really think need. a contributing factor is maybe even just comparing it to uh, prior generations is as moms more we are working more mm -hmm. uh, than prior generations mm -hmm. so if we're just talking about mom of course dads have burnout too <laughs> right. parent in general but for moms I think we're now if you are working and you are also you know coming home to all the demands I think for sure um, it, we are just depleting our energy our resources all the way around right um, and yeah. it's actually a vicious cycle so mm -hmm. the research is showing that when you experience that burnout then you're more likely which I hate this and I just really hit me to neglect and detach from the child which mm. then later turns into more guilt mm -hmm. which then makes mm -hmm. you feel more burnout mm -hmm. and I can say I mean it, it it's like can make you teary-eyed mm -hmm. when you think mm -hmm. I don't want to, I, am I neglecting or detaching? But it's more emotionally, maybe you're there as they're trying to do their homework for an hour and a half, but you're not. Right. How, yeah, do, you do, I, how do you do that? You know, recently, that is a good example, like my 10 year old was doing some homework, you know, they're teaching math different. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking oh. it's just double digit something, you know, multiplication and this is how we did it. And she's like, well, my teacher said that you guys did it totally wrong. And so I'm trying to help Different, her, yeah. yeah, and she's getting frustrated because she's learned it one way. And I literally had to walk away. I was like, yeah. look, when is this due? And she's like, it's not due right now. <laughs> right. I was like, yeah. listen, uh, I, need a moment. I need to go. <laughs> I have a yoga class that starts at 8. <laughs> I'm going to go do that, and let's reconvene. So you know what we did? Um, we came back to it. We went to the library and yeah. went over it mm -hmm. at a time when it was a calmer moment when she was more relaxed in it. So I think we have to like take those moments, yeah. whether it's a mommy moment, whether it's a moment with your child and say, look, this isn't working for us right now. You work through it and then we'll come back and address yeah. it or yeah. something. You just have to find that flow for your household yes. and your children, you know? Yeah. Do doctor, are you seeing this uh, more in your practice mm -hmm. of more people saying, I 
am not coping well and mm -hmm. then it's making me feel that guilt? For sure. I mean, we're, I'm definitely seeing more in the office and, and I think we can all testify to this too as parents that guilt is kind of a part and parcel of, of uh, parenting, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And so each of us has to come to terms with where we want guilt to fit into our lives. And what I can tell you is I certainly had to work on that for myself and I have figured out there is, there is one purpose of guilt. Okay, um, so there is one. The one purpose of guilt <laughs> is to teach. Oh. And so if I'm ever feeling guilty, I do stop and ask myself, what should I have done differently? And if the answer is something, then I really try to learn it. Mm -hmm. And here's where my relationship with guilt changed. I, I went from thinking of guilt as a, another sign that I'm not doing anything right to almost being grateful to it. Mm -hmm. You know, it wow. taught me what I needed to learn. I love that. Right? And so you almost say nice. thank you to guilt and then you release it. Uh, if you don't release it, then it leads to shame. And mm. shame is so much heavier than guilt. Yes. And so a lot yes. of parents come into my office really describing shame more than guilt. I'm going to yeah. write that down when I rewatch this. Shame more than guilt. Shame more than guilt. Yeah. Shame more than guilt. And let's talk about this. A study reveals um, that something between 2 and 12% of parents are currently that. Is that right, Haley? Only two and twelve. <laughs> I know. It didn't. Seem I'm sorry. Right. I, I think that should be way more. No, right. but, um, actually, they're saying here's what's to blame. And Kara, of course, you touched upon it—the comparison game. Yeah. The first one being social media. Mm -hmm. um, the wins that you see from other people—it's yeah. hard to. Mm -hmm. You're not really this way so much, but I think mm -hmm. we all can can uh, get in on it a little bit of mm -hmm. wanting to to feel like yeah. we win and our mm -hmm. family is one. Mm -hmm. and, um, what do you think? Well, I do, and I think the like the guilt part too. It's like we have all these. We've lived our whole lives forming these relationships with other people, right? Mm -hmm. And your relationships give you something back. And then when your kid isn't giving you something back, mm -hmm. that you feel like you aren't worth like the yes. relationship. Yes. Right. So, but it's so silly to expect that of our children right. because they don't really know. They haven't right. lived the lives we've lived and don't know the expectations of what a real relationship is. So, yes. I don't it's know so if well that makes said. sense, but yes. it's like, you yeah. know, so it's okay to have these emotions when our kids aren't fulfilling us in the way we see fit. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know. But they don't have the capacity right. yet. No. Yes. No. I do think in terms of the social media though, the win aspect, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, it, the goal, and I certainly had to deal again with trying to be perfect in every role that I play and realizing that that's not possible, mm -hmm. right? It's not, it's not actually an even an attainable goal. Mm -hmm. But social media would have you believe that it is. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we have to put social media in, it, in its right perspective. Mm -hmm. And so the way that I try to think about social media is, you know, before we have that, you'd go to a friend's house and on their coffee table was their nice uh, photo album. Yeah, <laughs> and right. you'd look through the photo album and it had their best vacations yes. and their best memories. Uh -huh. It didn't have the time where you had the flu and it right. didn't have the time where your kid threw up at <laughs> three in the morning yeah, and you had to go change the right. sheets. Yeah, right. So, I mean, to me, social media is their wins, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that everyone's living a winning life all the time. Sure. Right. And so being able to kind of give yourself credit for it just being in the game, yeah. whether yeah. you're yeah. winning or not How all the time. How do you teach your kids that, though, uh, yeah. to not idolize like the perfection that they see? Because it's not real. Right. right. That's what we struggle with. Yeah. I mean, I think all of us. Right. I mean, one of the things that I definitely talk to a lot of kids about in my practices, I mean, we tend to give kids the message that what you do is a, is a sign of who you are. And mm -hmm. really, those are two different things. So to be able to help your child understand who he is or she is, that isn't based on what they've done that day. So rather than seeing a report card that's really great and saying, wow, I'm so proud of you, you made straight A's, you might say, wow, there you go again being creative or hardworking. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, those I'd are like skills that, that yes. are you know, more about you and that'll come in handy no matter what you do to be yes, creative. Yes, I exactly. love that. Yeah. 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 With you more. <laughs> All right, quickly, because I want to get to these other points. What do you think about another potential cause to the burnout is lack of support. Um, researchers mm -hmm. reveal that for many of us, we're just not close to family nearby. Mm -hmm. My mother lived next door to aunts. The other block was cousins. Uh -huh. I mean, every mm -hmm. you had that support that was just so vital, mm -hmm. um, and also that sense of a really close fam that family yeah. knit experience. Mm -hmm. I, my mom's not here. Jim's mom yeah, is my gone. My mom's not here. My mom's in Chicago, you know, so that's super far away as yeah. far as distance. So, you know, all of these different things we have to deal with. But I think one of the things that I try to do, and, and I'm an only child as well, to make it even mm -hmm. worse, I don't have like a lot of siblings yeah. to rely on. Mm -hmm. But what I try to do is to utilize the friends or other mommies. Yes. We've talked mm -hmm. about this in the past on the show you know, getting those mom friends, you know, and kind of like sharing a little bit in the duties. Okay, can you keep the kids for a few hours yes, or a couple of yeah. hours while I do these errands? So I think doing that and really trying to um, just share the wealth a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, it takes a yeah. village, mm -hmm. it really does, yeah. you mm -hmm. know. What do you think, Kara? Because your mom gets to come visit like mine, yeah. but it's tough. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. I mean, I think that you're blessed if you get to have your family around. Exactly. I get to be involved in your children's lives more, but you just kind of have to do the best. 
the best yeah, you the best can, you can. Yeah. and include them when you can. Right. You know? so. and, and that kind of relates to what the experts say, um, you know, tips to avoid feeling that burn are forget the myth of being that perfect parent. I Step like away from social media, as you're saying. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, ask for help because mm -hmm. I think that that is so critical is to actually not be afraid. And we talked about this, I think, last week on Real Talk. Um, and I, as far as help with kids, <laughs> I'll ask all day long, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, right? I mean, yeah. I maybe didn't used to, but now, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just essential. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. we don't have to. I, yeah. I, I think we mix up um, responsibility, right? Being responsible, they're my kids and ultimately I'm responsible, or a word like uh, uh, independent. Mm -hmm. I think we mistake those words for meaning being alone. Mm -hmm. uh, and thank yeah. goodness, you yeah. know, that at any point in my life, including right now at this point in my life, I am not alone and I can yeah. ask questions. Right. So mm -hmm. a lot of it really is coming to terms with the word itself and, and, and re realizing that no one figures that out, out yeah. all by themselves. Right. You know what also came to me is that, you know, as parents we try to be the perfect parents, but really to your kids you are. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, really? you know, in many no. ways. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like you may not always so feel it. I mean, you may not always feel it, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It, at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, the other day I had like on this, this shirt and it was like cropped and my daughter's like, oh my gosh, mom, you're getting like abs again. You know, she remembers <laughs> I still have a little mommy belly going on, right? Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I'm winning. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but to her, I'm winning. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like the little things in life. So. I mean, they may not always feel like, oh, you're the winner to the kids, but at the end of the day, they really do admire yeah. us. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. For one thing or another. Maybe it's maybe it's our hair. Maybe yes. it's our clothing. Or maybe style. it's the way that yeah. you hug it's them. Yeah. Maybe it's the way you hug them. Yes. It's yes. whatever. Faith, we have to wrap. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah. 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 Maybe it's the way you wrap them up like a burrito. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a tight burrito. Thank you, Dr. B. Thank you. Incredible. Rewind and be like, take, what did you say about that? <laughs> so good. Training with Trent is coming up next. And weigh in, weigh in. Oh gosh, Trent, did I miss? On Facebook, we want to know how you uh, beat the burnout. Mm -hmm. Tell us, tell us. Or do you, what, what are we saying? Yes, you have it. Please vote. And then, of course, uh, share the way you get over it. Be honest. Be honest. <laughs>